Would you like to automate the deploys of your web path automation projects? If yes, stay here because this tutorial is for you. Hello! If you're new here, hi Marcelo, and on this tutorial we will learn how to automate deploys of web path projects by using web path automation knobs pipelines. So this will be a full tutorial from scratch. You'll learn everything you need to be able to create your automation ops pipelines in order to automate the deployment process of your white path projects. But just before getting started, let's get the basic understanding about automation ops pipelines. So as it says here, automation ops pipelines provides an easy way to set up a continuous integration, continuous delivery system, also known as CI/CD to manage the code of your automation projects in GitHub and now in the future will be supported Azure Ripples so probably when you are watching this tutorial Azure Ripples are also supported by automation ops pipelines and so in simple words the goal of automation ops pipelines is to help us to automate the deployment process of our YPath projects and this is a kind of tool like many others that already exist and that you probably already work with like Jenkins and Azure DevOps so if you have already worked with these tools I can tell you automation ops pipelines are way easier to work and set up so I'm very excited to guide you throughout this tutorial so let's get started and learn how to work with automation ops pipelines so let's get started by the requirements and one of them is to have a github account so if you don't have already one uh, you just have to create one and it's very simple you just have to go to github.com and click here on sign up and yeah just follow the instructions here and you can create an account very easily another requirement is to have white path installed on your machine or on the machine where we want to run the pipelines and also now it's more about the tutorial is to have git installed on your machine so uh, you can follow this tutorial because we'll create a simple white path project and then uh, commit the project and push the project to github to get the repository that we'll create so to be able to do this we'll use the git terminal and so to have the git terminal you need to install git so it's pretty simple you just have to search on google by git and then you go here to the downloads page shows here probably will be windows and yeah you just select here the windows setup to download and it's really easy to install it just uh, next 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 installer so it's really easy and then when you install the git uh, you should be able to see git bash here uh, so basically the git terminal where we can easily execute the git commands and in last but not least you should have a wipad account so access to automation call because it's from here where we'll access uh, the automation ops pipelines set up and work with them so uh, let's get started by creating a repository on our github account where we'll store a wipad project that will create a very simple one that just has a log message so to create a repository on github it's really simple so after you log in with your account just click here and now click on new repository and now we just have to define the repository name so let's say wipad dash hello role and that's it so let's just create the repo so the repo it's created so now here we just have already the instructions to be able to push uh, the code uh, our white path project code to this repo so what we'll do now we'll create a very simple white path project so i just opened it here white path studio and let's create a new process uh, with the name hello uh, underscore world and let's just hit create so now let's just use a log message and on the message 
let's add hello world and log level info and that's it so now what is the next step the next step is to publish our project why path orchestrator and add the process there and why because in order to be able uh, to set up and work with the pipeline to automate the deployment process on this specific project first the process must already exist on ypath orchestrator so that's the requirement so let's just click here on publish and now on publish options let's publish to the orchestrator tenant process field and let's just click publish and now Let's go to Orchestrator. And now I will have the process on the shared folder. So let's just click here processes and process. And now let's select the package. So here it is the one that we have published before. So now just click next, next. And that's it. Let's just click now on create. And we have had the process. So now let's uh, push our project to our Git repository that we have created. So we can do it from here, from Studio, without using the Git terminal. However, in my experience, uh, it sometimes gives some problems doing it from Studio. Problems that I don't get from the Git terminal. So I always prefer to use the Git terminal. So let's do it. So here, let's open the project panel and click here to open uh, the file explorer on the project. So now from here, uh, what we'll do to open the Git terminal on this folder, let's press Ctrl, Shift and then right click and it should appear here some options and one of them open Git bash here. So let's click here. And here we have git bash opened here on the project folder. So now, very simple, we just have to follow the steps that we have here. So first we have to initialize the git repository. So let's do git init. Then we have to add the whole project. So then we can commit the whole project to git. So for that we do git add dot. And now let's do the commit git commit m for the message and now let's set the commit message so it can be first commit now git branch m main and now we have to add the remote so our repo so let's just copy here this command and now let's paste it press enter and now to push the project to our repo let's execute the last command git push origin main and that was it so now if we refresh here the page here you can see our project code here on the repo so now that we have uh, the code on the repo let's start to set up the automation ops pipelines so here on automation cloud let's open here automation ops and now let's click here on pipelines and now let's press get started and now we have to choose first the orchestrator tenant so the tenant where the pipelines will run basically so as it says here basically uh, we have to choose a tenant where the pipelines will run and be set up and also uh, will be created a folder called pipelines on the tenant that we select and also a robot account named pipelines robot and this will be the robot account that will run the pipelines so here let's select the tenant and now we have to choose the machine where the pipelines will run. So I'll select this one. And now let's press setup. And as it says here, the pipeline setup is now complete. So now if we go back to Orchestrator and refresh, 
Here we can see that we have a new folder called pipelines, which has already some process and these are pipeline process and we'll see more about them in few minutes. So now uh, we have to set up the connection between our iPath and our GitHub account. So uh, let's do it from here by clicking on connect to GitHub. So now we have to install the authorized OIPath automation ops on our GitHub account. However, there is a small detail that we have to take uh, in attention. And that is, if you are doing this on your company and your company has an organization account on GitHub, for this uh, initial connection to install the authorized OIPath automation ops, you'll need to be a GitHub organization admin or else you'll need to ask a GitHub organization admin to do this initial setup. So this installation, the authorization of WhitePath Automation Ops on GitHub for you, because else it will not work. So it's just a small detail that it's needed to have in attention. So in our case, we are doing on a personal account, so no issues there. So here we can select option our repositories and everything will be taken in account, all the repositories that we have on our account. Else we can select the repositories that should be headed on automation ops. So let's just select the repositories. And here we have one, so let's select it. And then in the future, we can update the repositories to take into account and we'll see how we can do it also later in this tutorial. So now let's press here install e authorize. So the connection is established. So here we can see our repository here on automation ops. So that's a good sign. So now we are here on the source control page of automation ops. Let's go back to pipelines and let's click on new pipeline so now we have select the repository that uh, will be taken in account for this pipeline that we are creating so each pipeline uh, that we create it's for a repository so it's a one-to-one -one relation and now we have to select a branch so we just have only one so it's the main and now automation project, we just select the project.json. So now it shows uh, the pipeline process that will be used on this pipeline. So we have uh, basically five processes. And so here on the docs, it explains very well the difference. So for example, the build and publish basically clones uh, the project uh, from the repo analyzes, build and publish uh, the package on Orchestrator. So that means that it doesn't upgrade the related process on Orchestrator. It just publishes the package. Then we have here this one, and this is the one that we will use. Uh, so it clones, analyzes, build, publish the package, and also updates the process. So uh, publish the package and updates the related process on Orchestrator. And now there is a, a very good one, build and promote with approval. So basically, this is a good pipeline process in the cases. So let's say that you have a tenant for QA and a tenant for production processes. So uh, what does this pipeline? It basically takes in account two tenants. So let's say the first one will be the QA. So first it clones, analyze, run tests if you want will publish the package and update the process on QA tenant. And then it creates a task on action center. And so uh, basically it, the pipeline is suspended. And so it will wait for your approval. So when you approve the task and submit the task, the pipeline is resumed and upload the packages on the second tenant, let's say the production tenant and updates the related process. So let's use this one, update process from code. So here, let's select it. And so now we have to pass some uh, parameters here in order to this process pipeline behavior to work. So first is a process name that will be updated. 
So here we can see it, hello world. So let's paste here the name. Then here, skip validation. Uh, let's skip the validation. So let's set it to true. And now more details about these properties you can find here on the docs. So I'll leave on the description of this tutorial the link so you can uh, see later uh, the docs about automation ops pipelines. Uh, so now we have provided the docs state URL. So doc state URL should be from the beginning until doc state underscore. And then our state folder. So in my case, it's Sharon. So I'll just enter Sharon. In your case, if you are using subfolders and let's say you want to put the process uh, that must be updated from this pipeline, it's on a subfolder. So we have to indicate the path from the beginning until this subfolder. So let's say here we have the shared folder and then the subfolder demos and the process to be updated is on the demos folder. So it will be shared and then here demos. So just to give an idea. So now let's click on next. Now here we can define the project name. So the name of the pipeline. So let's leave as it is. And here we can add a description. And here run this pipeline. Uh, we can either choose to run it only manually or run this pipeline automatically for each commit that we push to the main branch of our repo. So this is the best option. So because it becomes really automated, the process. So let's choose for each commit. And now here, let's just press save. And here we have our first pipeline created. So now there is just a little thing that we have to do orchestrator in order to, for this pipeline work. So uh, what, the last thing that this pipeline will do, it's basically to update uh, the process on the folder that we have indicated. And so that means that the robot user must have access and the right permissions on the folder. So uh, the robot user it's able to update the process so here on the shared folder on my case I will go to users and now uh, here let's press assign account and let's assign the pipeline robot account and now here the roles let's provide the role pipelines folder role and let's assign the user so now it's fine. So the robot user will be able to update the process here on the folder. So now uh, let's give a try and run our pipeline. So we can even, uh, we have selected to run it for each commit. So will be the trigger. We can uh, run it manually. So to run it manually, we just have to click here on the pipeline. And now we just have to press start new job and this will basically start the pipeline. So let's click here on start new job. And here we can see that we got an exception and it says a machine with an antenna runtime is required. So basically the machine that we have uh, defined to be the one that runs uh, the pipelines where the pipelines will be executed must have an antenna runtime. So if you got this error, let's solve it together. So basically we go here to tenant, machines, and now here on our machine that we have defined as the machine to be used by the pipelines, let's edit the machine and assign a production and attendant runtime license. And let's update. So now uh, let's try again. So let's click on start new job. And here, as we can see, we started a new job. So this is uh, the first run that failed because of the missing uh, runtime license. So now this is the one that is running. And here we can see that the pipeline run was successful from cloning the repo to update the process. So if we go now here on the shared folder process, here we can see that in fact was updated. We have here a new version. So the first version was 
dot one and here we have one dot zero dot one dash two so the dash two it's the build number so it will always increment so the next time we run the pipeline it will be three then four and so on so on so on so it uh, uh, thinks oxidator thinks that this is a version below the one that existed before so to solve this really easily you can just go here to the tenant packages and delete the older package and so yeah we don't have that problem anymore and it doesn't suggest to update uh, the process to a version that in reality was older than this one so now let's see if we can trigger the pipeline by doing a commit and push it to our repo so what we'll do here on our project let's just duplicate this log message so we just created a change let's save and now here on the git terminal let's do git add dot so to take into account to add the changes to our commit that we'll do and now here let's set the log the commit message and now that we did a commit we have to push it to the repo and this is what will trigger the pipeline so let's do git push so now if we go back here on automation ops uh, let's just go back here here we can see that we have the pipeline running and here it says what is the commit that triggered the commit message that triggered the pipeline and here we can see that has run successfully and now if we go back here and refresh here we can see that we have a new version of our process so now that we have successfully created the pipeline which is running well let's learn how we can add more repositories to automation ops in order to be able to add in the future uh, more pipelines to different projects so first let's just create a new repository here on our github account and let's just define a repository name ypath second repo for example just to create the repository let's click on create repository so now that we create the repository how we can add this repository to be taken in account to be added to automation ops so then when we are creating a pipeline it also appears on the list it also appears on the drop down menu where it asks to select a repo so uh, to have uh, to configure uh, the repositories added to automation ops we have to go to our account settings and now here let's scroll a bit and go to applications and here you can see the white path automation ops application the integration so let's click on configure and now let's scroll a bit and here we can see uh, where we can select the repositories so here let's click on the menu again and here we can see our newest repository so let's select it and now it appears here so just to remove a repository if you want we can just click on this uh, cross on this button so now we have to save the changes so we click on save and we have had a repository however there is a thing if the repository that you have doesn't have any code there it will not show up on automation ops so let's just verify that so if we go now here on automation ops on source control in order to appear new repositories that we had we have to sync to perform the sync so here to sync the connection we just click here on this button And now let's click here on refresh as it indicates and we can see that the repo that we have had now doesn't appear and the reason it's because it doesn't have any code so so let's just uh, push uh, code to this uh, newest uh, repo so to keep it simple I'll just create a second process with the name second process 
and, and now I'll just commit right away so we can see that it appears then after push the code to the repo it appears on automation ops so if we go here to the file explorer let's do control shift and right click and open the git terminal on this folder and now let's just follow the steps to push the code so first git init then git head to add everything on the commit that we will do git commit and first commit and then let's do let's uh, do here the git branch uh, main then let's add a remote and then let's do the git push and so now we have code here so now if we go back to automation ops and uh, sync again the connection now let's refresh and now here we can see that now that we have the code on the repo it appears here on source control at automation ops so now if we go again throughout the process of creating a pipeline by clicking on new pipeline you can see now here that appears the repo that we have had now and that was it uh, for this tutorial and if you liked it uh, please give a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications bell so you don't miss any tutorial uh, released here on the channel so i'll see you on the next tutorial